In a previous video, I showed you how to build an Amiga 500 Plus using a Mr. FPGA, but it was using printed backplates, these ones in fact. And that solution worked absolutely fine, but it was a little untidy with all the, uh, the additional USB cables stretched around the case and whatever else. So what I'm going to show you in this video is a subtle spin on that theme. We're basically doing the same thing again, but this time we're going to use a Mistress 500 board to support all the interconnects. And the point of that is to keep it a little tidier in the case, but also to overcome some of the issues that we previously experienced using the Arduino keyboard controller. So we won't be using that this time. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is install into the base of the case, the um, mistress daughter board or the mistress board and the other ancillaries that come with it. I'll talk you through that a little more once we've got it inside the case. So uh, whilst we've got the case open, um, uh, this here, uh, uh, as you may have seen on a previous video, is basically a, a stripped down GoTech drive bracket. And the only reason we've got that in there at the moment is to fill the gap. So we're acting, uh, we're using it as a blanking plate effectively. At some point in the future, if there's an option for the Mr. FPGA to add a floppy drive, then we'll remove the, uh, the blanking plate and put a floppy drive in its place. But uh, that's a, a future project for the time being. And let's have a look, what else have we got down here? So we've got an original Amiga A500 keyboard and there's the top of the case there. Okay, let me get the uh, the mistress installed and then we'll have another so look at that. Working our way through the pile of bits that came with the mistress 500 kit. So the first thing we need to do is put the back plate in for the HDMI and also for the Ethernet. Now you'll see that some of the ports are blanked out. Um, They're not needed because yeah. all the ports that are required are provided on the main board, but we'll come on to that. So, that basically gets clipped in there. And then that is secured in position by that plate there. Now this plate also provides an option to mount an SSD or an old school hard drive if that's your preference. Uh, I'm probably not going to use that at this stage. We'll probably just stick with an SD card, but that is an option if you decide to go down that route. Okay, now the other bits and pieces in the kit here we will need, but not just yet. So the next thing to do is to install the main Mistress 500 board. So here we have the main Mistress 500 board. Let's just take that out of the uh, handy static bag. Okay, so if we have a quick look at this, essentially the Mr. FPGA is going to be mounted here across the middle of the board. And there's some connectors on here, which may look familiar to you. Okay, in fact, let's pop it around that way, get a slightly better view. So that's going to provide our SD card connectivity. And then if we have a look at the back of the board, I'm not going to go through all of these connectors in detail at this stage. We'll have a closer look at it after it's uh, been put together. We've got our console port connector, which is this one here. This is a USB connection, another couple of USBs here. We've got our audio out connections here. That's our VGA out. This is actually uh, an old school 9-pin D uh, joystick adapter. We've then got our SD card slot. So that's obviously provided by um, extending out the SD card from the DE10 Nano or the Mr. FPGA. Uh, we've got a reset button here. And then further down on the end of the board, 
where you've got our five volt barrel connector and we've also got our power toggle switch and that's about it there's some more usb connections but they're for internal connections so we'll come on to those as we connect the board up uh, we've also got our fpga mr fpga uh, extension buttons here as well but uh, i'm sure that we're really going to be using those actually because i think they're they're going to be hidden inside the case uh, one connector to uh, to note especially though is the amiga 500 keyboard connector which is this yellow one just here we're certainly going to be using that in theory it should simply be a case of lining the ports up and offering the board up Okay, so we'll secure it in just a second, but essentially that's how it's going to sit. And you can see that it does actually slightly overlap the other plates. That's fine, that's obviously as intended. Okay, so now we've got the mistress board in situ and lined up with the, uh, the holes for the screws, we're going to secure it in place. So the first thing we're going to do is secure this plate over here. And for that we need one of these plastic washers and we also need the self-tapping screw both should be included with the kit okay okay so that's that one done so if you're working on a project right now and you need a high quality PCB starting at just $5 or some 3D printing even, you might want to check out our sponsor PCBWay. And next, we're going to take one of the red washers here and use one of the smaller screws. Okay, and we're going to use this to secure, well two of them in fact, but to secure the left hand side. So there's two more screws that we need to use to secure the board. For those, we're going to use the longer screws included in the kit. So the, these ones here. And we'll also need the, uh, the red washers. And Two, two nuts as well, we're going to need those. And then we need to clear the decks because we're going to have to uh, upend this so we can secure those two screws from the back of the case. So having poked that through from the back of the case, I'll pop a red washer on the top. And loosely the nut over we'll, we'll tighten that up in just a sec and the same for the uh, the other hole at the top there okay so red washer on and we'll loosely tighten up the nut And you can see from the rear of the case that's now secured using the existing uh, screw holes. And the next thing to do is to install the D10 Nano or uh, Mr. FPGA itself. Okay, so we're going to take our brand new D10 Nano FPGA. packaging like this so the first thing we need to do with this is pretty much remove all of the uh, the packaging and the spacers so that it's ready to go onto the mistress 500 board okay next we're going to take our d10 nano we need to remove 
PSD card that came with it, assuming one did. Keep that aside. You may, may need that later. Okay, and then you need to line up the SD connector. Let's see if I can zoom this in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we've got our SD card connector here and that needs to line up and go into the SD card slot and you should hear it click into place. And the four screw holes should also be lined up and in the kit that came with the mistress should be four brass standoffs. We're going to use those to secure the D10 Nano into position and these will also be used to mount the uh, the fan when we get to that point. There's a few other things we can do whilst we're here. So this ribbon cable, now it depends which version of the Mistress kit you've got, the previous iteration of this kit may have had a slightly different connector, but this one's got a ribbon cable. The principle's the same anyway. So we're gonna carefully connect that. Onto the connector on the uh, D10 Nano. We can also connect all the power supply cable. Well, obviously we don't want any power running into it at this time and the HDMI cable can go in at this point and also the Ethernet cable and that's about it for the time being. So the next thing we need to do is check that the dip switches here are set up correctly. So I'm just going to refer to the manual and make sure we get those right. Okay so on the D10 now the larger bank of dip switches here or the bank of larger dip switches I should say need to all be set down. Now this is the recommended settings when running the uh, D10 Nano as a mister. Uh, if you've got things configured differently, maybe your, your settings will need to change. But uh, I'm just going from the recommendation uh, from the MrFPGA.co.uk website. Okay, I'm just going freehand for this bit. So the smaller dip switches need to be set according to the, uh, the recommendation anyway when running as a, a mister. If I can even get it to focus. Okay, well you can see there, up, down, up, down, up, up. So these are actually the defaults on this board. So you'll probably be okay, but best to check them anyway. And on the analog ports, the jumper settings here need to be shifted to use the outer two pins. A small pair of pliers might be useful for this. Okay, so for analog should be on the outer two pins there for the RCA connectors. Okay, next thing. Um, this connector should be included with the Mistress 500 kit. And that needs to be fitted to jump these connections. And this will probably be more than one video incidentally. This is going to be part one, constructing the hardware. Part two is going to be a walkthrough on how to actually configure the D10 Nano as a mister. Let's just zoom in a bit so you can see. There we go. Okay, let's shift the camera over slightly. And the next thing we're going to do is connect the OTG port on the D10 Nano. That's here to the USB in connection on the mistress board. And what that's going to do for us effectively is extend our USB connectivity. Okay, I'll just give you a closer look at that. The E10 Nano 
won't actually come with a heat sink so this is kind of optional and we are going to be installing a fan but so as a, an extra precaution I'm going to install a heat sink as well straight on to our FPGA chip now that's pretty much it except for the additional RAM module and optionally the RTC which I'm going to install on this one not necessary because it will sync via NTP so next we're going to install the RAM module so this is a 128 meg RAM module you need to make sure you get it around the right way it will tell you depending on which one you buy but it should hopefully say which way to orientate it in this case this side faces outward so outward in this case is going to be that way around and here's our RTC or real time clock you can see we've already got our battery installed and that is going to be fitted into this connector over here so that is pretty much the mister constructed onto the mistress 500 board the only thing left to do from a hardware perspective is to install the fan now this can only go one way around as you can probably just about see here so there's a, a space to a, accommodate the st ram module and that will fit on there like that going back to the mistress 500 kit there should still be four screws so we're going to take these four screws from the kit and use those to secure the fan to the standoffs fan connector here into the fan connector on the mistress 500 board which is just to the lower left okay let's zoom back out a bit so there we go now obviously you can take your time to do a bit of cable management as you see fit but in essence that's it constructed a few cable ties at some point won't hurt just to tidy things up next we're going to take our a 500 or Amiga 500 keyboard which we're going to rest on the case now I remember this from last time when you've got the Ethernet cable plugged in it kind of obscures your access to get to the keyboard connector so you may find you need to disconnect that briefly this connector over here this yellow connector this is the keyboard connector pin 1 is marked with a white dot just there if you can see it Let's zoom in a fraction more, in fact. It's about as good as it gets. Okay, so, yeah, as I say, pin one marked with a white connector here. And on the keyboard connector, pin one should be marked with, in this case, well, yours might be different. Mine's marked with a black dot anyway. And uh, typically it'll be the black cable. And you can tell that it's correct because one of the wires is missing and that's got a missing pin on the connector. So you'll know you've got it around the right way. Okay, and again, gently as you can, just line it up and ease it on. And there we go, that's our keyboard connected. Now you may want to do a little bit of cable management, but in essence that's on. And having got that on, you should in theory be able to reconnect the Ethernet cable. Okay, back out. Now what we haven't done so far, I'll just move the camera over a little bit. We haven't connected any additional uh, USB dongles for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything else in fact. So given that we've got a USB connector there, another USB connector there, 
and another USB connector there, three USB connectors internally that we could utilize, you may want to use one or more of those for other dongles. Um, the alternative is to use the external connectors, depending on what you're trying to achieve. But the ethernet, which is this connector, is gonna be connected anyway. So that's always an option. We're not going to do anything with that for now uh, because I can use ethernet to build the machine. So for the time being, we're gonna pop the case back on, screw it up, and for part one, that'll be pretty much it. And there you go, that's our six case screws in. And now we can have a quick look at the back of the machine. So you can see here from left to right, we've got a USB connection here, we've got a console port, we've got our DB9 joystick connector, we've got our right and left audio connections, we've got a further two USBs, oh sorry, move the camera, we've got our reset button, we've got our SD card slot here, you'll recall we extended that internally, we've got our VGA connector, We've got our five volt barrel connector for our power. We've got our power toggle switch. We've got our HDMI connector. And finally, we've got our ethernet connector there. So as I said earlier in the video, I am gonna make a follow up uh, part two video with a step-by-step -step guide on how to uh, configure the uh, the Mr. Amiga 500 from scratch. However, um, because I've, in true Blue, Blue Peter style, got um, one I prepared earlier, I've literally just taken the uh, the SD card out of the, uh, the other Mr. Amiga, and uh, I can give you a quick demo of this booting up just so you can see that the hardware's working. Don't have the audio connections plugged in yet, but, um, you'll be able to see it come up on the screen. First thing we're looking for is the power LED and the drive light LED. So you can see there, they're flashing away. And if we just pop one up on screen, this particular build has been configured to boot straight into the Mini Mega Mega Core. And there we go, up to workbench. 3.2, not 3.2.1 actually to be specific, that's just what happened to be installed on uh, on that particular image, just to demonstrate it very quickly. Let's straighten that monitor up a bit. Okay, so hopefully you can see there, it's reporting there's a 68020, no FPU, got the AGA chipset, and it's set up to use PAL, which is all correct, that's what I'd expect. And if we give it a quick speed test, yeah, you can see there it's reporting as 0.71 times the speed of a 68040 at 25 megahertz, which is exactly what I'd expect. So just to test the uh, the keyboard, it's uh, Amiga 500 keyboards it can be a little flaky sometimes. If we just give this a quick test, there will be a follow-up part two where I'll step you through how to configure the mister. For now, cheers guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.